good to see you this morning. Welcome to Dry Creek Baptist Church. We're going to stand together and sing uh, this hymn number 391, A Sweet, Sweet Spirit. And as we're doing that, if you'll step across and greet someone, shake their hand, hug their neck, make them feel welcome here this morning. Shake their neck or hug their hand. Either way, it'll, it'll work. Let's stand together. 391. seat if you would. Thank you so much for being here. We want to welcome you today to Dry Creek Baptist Church. What a blessing it is to have you here today and uh, this uh, day that we honor and celebrate Father's Day. Uh, you've noticed that uh, we went to all our special efforts to honor fathers with a special set and scene. Not, not really. <laughs> This is Vacation Bible School. We just finished up this last week, and uh, I want to, Ashley, have you got the statistics on what we did? I want to share with you how well VBS went and just express my gratitude as pastor to uh, uh, Leslie and Summer and Lacey and all the volunteers that came alongside them to help put all this together. And we had a wonderful, wonderful week. The gospel was was shared on several occasions uh, throughout the week, and we had a number of kids. It was $150.25 total offering that went to the sh Operation Shoebox to help it cover the expense of sending some boxes overseas. Again, our goal while I'm there is 750 boxes, and so we need $6,750 just to ship them, not to fill them, but to ship them. So keep that in mind. What's the, what else you got, Ashley? I'm sorry, I thought you had it. was real funny. She came Saturday, and uh, when Leslie asked about 750 plus nine, well, how much was it? 6,000, I can't do it in my head. 6,750. And, and then she said our, and then we took up $92. That's right. <laughs> It was Karen good. was really worried about it. She thought Great that was start. the goal for Bible school was 6,000. Our average, average attendance was 101. And okay, we're, we're on, God's, God's got it taken care of. Today we honor fathers, and uh, I know that uh, along, just like Mother's Day, when Father's Day comes, there's for many people, there's different emotions that go along with that holiday because not everybody had a dad that uh, they, they want to remember. But uh, can I just encourage you that today uh, you have a heavenly father who is worth dwelling on and thinking about. But we also know that there are so many of you here that your fathers uh, are, are, are special. They're still in your life. Some of you have lost your dads in, in recent days, recent years. And so... It's a hard holiday uh, for, 
for many, but we want to take just a moment and ask all of our fathers if you would stand. I need some helpers, Hadley in Brooklyn, Alec. Y'all grab them. Guys, fathers, stand up. We got a little gift to give you. And I've got some helpers here. They're going to come around and make sure you've got one, got a gift. Braley, help us out. That would be good. Jeremiah, you want to help? Okay. Uh, take, take a bunch of them. And any man that's standing up, you go give one to, okay? There you go, Steve. Shelby. Jerry. Here you go, Charlie. Emerson. There, you go. there we go. Let's see. Anybody else back here? Daniel, did you get one? Got one? Everybody over here got, got their gift? Right there, Brayley. Give, give one to Mr. Dub. There you go. All right. <laughs> oh, me. We want to, I want to take a moment and just say thank you uh, to the men of this church, to the fathers. Uh, I'm grateful that this morning I have my dad with me and uh, grateful that my, got a birthday this week. It's uh, coming up Wednesday of this week, dad. Dad's going to be, uh, oh, well, not anymore. He's going to be 106. <laughs> no, Dad, I, I'm grateful my sister brought Dad today to worship with us, and it's a special treat to have him here today. Let me pray for, uh, for our service today and pray for these men. Father God, we thank you for the blessing of life. God, I thank you for the gift of fathers in our lives. And, God, thank you for being our Heavenly Father. And, Lord, as you are who you are, you have set the standard by which all of us should aspire to. God, you have set the standard as a Heavenly Father who loves with an unfailing love, who forgives with a forgiveness that forgets and lets it go. God, you are incredible, and we praise you and honor you today as we honor these fathers. Help us, Lord God, to be the men of God that you've called us to be, to set the example for our children, no matter how young, no matter how old. God, we praise you and give you glory. Bless us as we worship in Jesus' name. Ashley, we're going to do Good, Good Father. I don't know if you have that up there yet. Uh, the young ruler, a uh, young man came to Jesus and said, Good teacher. And Jesus said, There is just one good, and that is uh, that's our Father. That's Father God. Sing it with us. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. But I've heard the tender whisper of love and the dead of night. And you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. When I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I What we need before we say a word, you're a good, good father. 
685 I'm thinking of songs for Father's Day I don't think you can go wrong with uh, footsteps of Jesus follow the footsteps of Jesus and you can't go wrong 685 sweetly Lord have we heard thee calling
this morning for an opportunity to come to your house and gather together as believers to, to worship you. And as we come to this time of our service where we give back a, a portion of what you've given to us, dear God, I pray that we do it with a giving heart. Uh, thank you for the blessings that you've bestowed on our church, and I pray that uh, we would do with this money with, with uh, what you would have to further your kingdom uh, here in uh, Jock Creek. In Christ's name, amen. This song in moments like these. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to Children's Church, Braley, come on, three to six years old. Hurry, 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 don't fall. Strength will rise when we wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, He will reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the
rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. Yes, you are. You are the Rises, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong Upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Amen. Praise team. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah chapter 40 says in first four, verse four, 28, Have you never heard, have you never understood the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Let me ask you this morning, has there ever been a time in your life where you have lost your strength? Where you literally could not put one foot in front of the other. You didn't know how you were going to do it. You didn't know what you were going to do. But your, your, your strength was just sapped. It was gone. Been there? Amen. A few of you have. Okay. All right. Well, let me, let me just suggest to you that oftentimes we think about aspects of strength in terms of physical strength, but there's also emotional strength. There's also uh, 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 spiritual strength as well, and we can be sapped from that uh, as, as well as our physical strength the definition of strength, if you look it up in the dictionary, there are, are several different facets of strength. It says body or muscular power. Muscular power. Mental power is another aspect of strength. Moral power. Or power by reason of influence and wisdom. You know, the common element, if you listen to that definition that I just shared with you, there's one element that's common to each facet, whether it be muscle, whether it be mental, whether it be moral, or whether it be just uh, the aspect of reason or wisdom. 
And the word is power. The word is power is where the common element is. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20, it says this. It says, for the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. You hear me? kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. So how are you doing with that? How are you doing with that? Are you living your life under your own power, under your own strength, or are you living your life under the power that's available to you by the King of kings, the creator of all the universe, the Lord of lords, God Himself? Whose power do you exist on? say, well, Brother Joe, what are you talking about? Are you talking about physical strength? Are you talking about emotional strength? Or are you talking about spiritual strength? I'm talking about all of it. I'm talking about all of it. You think the Bible addresses physical strength? Do you think God has anything to do with your physical strength? Who was the strongest man in the Bible? Samson. Samson's strength was given to him by who? God. What about, do you remember when... Uh, let's see, it was Elijah, I believe, who was talking with Ahab, and Ahab left to go to a city, and God gave uh, Elijah a supernatural power or strength to run and outrun a horse and a chariot, and he beat him there. God is concerned about your physical strength as well as your emotional or mental strength. I want you to stop and think about who in the Bible you might identify as, as someone who was strong mentally and emotionally? I, for me, the first person that comes to mind is Paul. You know, Paul, Paul uh, who was formerly known as Saul, was out to uh, do the church in. He was persecuting uh, the believers, and then, you know, Jesus appeared to him, and that, that incredible conversion experience that Paul experienced on the Damascus Road set him on a, on a different path in life. But Paul encountered abuse, persecution himself, uh, torture, uh, beatings, um, you, know, you, you name it, he experienced it. But, but his strength, God gave him a super, supernatural power in mental and emotional strength to stand against the abuse and the persecution time and time again. And then when you stop and you, speak, you think about the spiritual uh, strength that is needed, there's no greater example than Jesus himself, is there? You know, he sets the standard by which we all should aspire and move our lives toward that spiritual moral strength, that spiritual wisdom that, that he set forth for us. You know, as... As a believer, we make a choice every day as to whose strength or whose power am I going to rely on today? Am I going to rely on the strength of God within me or am I going to just work in my own strength, in my own way? I don't know about you, but I think more often than I care to admit, I end up going and trying to make it through each day under my own strength. God has so much more for us. You know, think about it. When if, if I'm working under my strength, uh, my own strength, there, I'm susceptible to the things that would rob me of my strength. Now stop and think with me. I want you to help me with this. What are things that rob you of your strength? And, and it can be emotional, it can be spiritual, it can be moral, it can be wisdom, it can be physical. What are the things that, that, that would sap your energy too busy what else sickness absolutely what else work what else <laughs> people all right what else what else would is debilitating would take your strength the heat Stress. You ever, you, ever, you ever have an anxious moment that just all of a sudden there's something, you know, maybe it's something in the mail or a phone call that you get 
or a confrontation that you didn't anticipate, and all of a sudden that, that it, it, it affects you mentally, it affects you emotionally, and it literally affects you physically. Just oh, you feel weak need. You, you, you're weak, your knees give out. There are all sorts of things that can rob us of our strength. And, and the, there's scripture references to, the, to this. You know, think about it. It says, a cheerful heart is good medicine. This is Proverbs 17, 22. But a broken spirit saps a person's strength. There you go. A broken spirit will sap your strength. Psalm 31, 10 says, that David was saying, I'm dying from grief. My years are shortened by sadness. Sin has drained my strength. I'm wasting away from within. Sin, guilt, remorse can sap your strength. Psalm 32, 4 says, Day and night, your hand of discipline, speaking, God, David speaking to God, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. The discipline of God. Suffering, basically, it comes down to suffering the consequences of our sin. It can sap our strength. What about just basic... <laughs> Anybody got a problem free, free life going on right now? If you do, I'd like to know your secret. Troubles. Basic troubles of living life. We encounter them. There's no trouble-free life when I'm relying on my own strength or my own power. Psalm 88, 3 and 4 says, For my life is full of troubles, and death draws near. I'm as good as dead like a strong man without strength left. That's if I'm relying on my strength, my power, and my own abilities. But what happens when we rely on God's strength? There's scriptural evidence of, of, of time and time again for us to call and to trust and to rely on the strength of God. Psalm 73, 26 says this, says, My health may fail and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. Philippians 4, 13 says, For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. I don't know about you, but just saying the verse, just speaking it out, changes how I feel inside. I can do anything. I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Psalm 18.32 says, God arms me with strength and He makes my way perfect. Psalm 46.1 says, God is our refuge and strength always, always ready to help in times of trouble. So if we turn to God as our source of strength, as our resource to refuel us, to keep us going, it makes all the difference in the world. But you know, here's the thing, we can talk about it, but how do you do that? How do you do that? Even with the scriptural evidence that it, the scripture calls us to rely and to trust on the strength of God, how do we do a task in the strength of someone else? You know, the truth is, if, it, if it's a physical body that's here with me, like you and I, if I came up to you and I said, I need your help, this, uh, this pew up here, this little pew, it's too heavy for me to lift. Could you get on one end and me get on the other? A number of you would be able to help. Even better, if I came to four or five of you and said, let's do it together. We can do that, can't we? We can pick that, that pew up. We can move it if we take the bolts out of the floor. I found that out back during the Easter program. It works better that way. But, you know, what about... God. You know, it's not like we have flesh and blood in front of us. It's how do I 
do a task or how do I confront a circumstance or a situation under His strength instead of my own? How do we exert our will to do something in such a way that you're relying on the will of God to make it happen? Well, I think there's some, some ways that we can do this. I want to give you, I want to give you a five-step sequence. And I want to give it to you in a new word. All right, I'm, I'm, I've got a word that I'm going to give you that has no definition, has no meaning, but it's an acronym. APTAT. APTAT. A, period, P, period, T, period, A, period, T, A P T A T, aptat. Now here's what it means. This is the sequence in order to help us be mindful of the strength of God is available to us. What do I do in order to assert His will into my will? Yeah, you know, it's it's and it's, it's it's real simple. First thing you do is you acknowledge. You acknowledge, or you can use the word admit if you'd write, rather have a short word. Acknowledge that you can do nothing without Him. That's, you know, that's scriptural, isn't it? John 15, 5 says, Jesus said, apart from me, you cannot do anything. So first thing is, uh, go to God the Father and admit, Lord, Lord I'm, I'm in a search, circumstance, I have a task to, to do that I cannot do. I can't do this. I'm nothing apart from you. Acknowledge, admit that you can do nothing. And then the second thing is this, is to pray. Pray for God's help for the task at hand. Sounds easy so far. That's, you say, well, Brother Joe, I do that all the time. That's, you know, I always go to God and ask God to help me whenever I'm facing something this difficult. Wonderful. What do you do next? Well, the next thing I want to suggest to you starts with a T, and it is this. Trust a particular, here it is, trust a particular promise of God. Trust a particular promise of God. And then the fourth thing that you do is, it starts with A, is act. Act based on what you know. And then the fifth thing is to thank God for what He's done. Now let me give you the, the basis for this. It's, you know, I, I've already told you that if you acknowledge before God that you, apart from Him you can do nothing, that's scriptural. When you pray for God's help for the task at hand, Psalms 138.3 says, As soon as I pray, David says, As soon as I pray, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me strength. He prays and he asks and he receives encouragement. The, the third element of uh, that, that first T is to trust a particular promise of God for God's help. But those who trust in the Lord, this is, we read it a moment ago, Isaiah 40, 31, those who trust in the Lord will find new strength they will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And then when you put your trust in that, a particular promise of God, then you act. You act on what you know. I, I, I think of the verse in, in Judges chapter 6, verse 14, when uh, Gideon, the word came to Gideon, says, Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength of you have. In other words, I've given you the strength to do what you've asked, what's been asked of you to do. Go with the strength you have. Rescue Israel from the Midianites. He said, God says, reminds Gideon, I'm sending you. I'm sending you. And then after acting, thank God for the help received. Psalm 18, 1 says, I love you, Lord, for you are my strength. What a declaration. Now, the, here's, here's one of the issues with this five-step sequence. It's, it's not that hard. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, in terms of it's not that profound, except for I think that most often what we do is we skip a step. 
oftentimes we, we've got the understanding, we can understand that I've got something before me that I'm not able to do, and, and immediately we can go and we can ask God for help and, and we can pray. Uh, but I think we oftentimes skip the part of trusting, trusting a particular promise from God. And we go right into acting. We pray and we say, God, I need your help. Boom. And we take off and do whatever we think is the right thing to do without considering what God, what promise God may have that would be the basis for us to act on. We should remind ourselves of God's promises. The promises that He's made to us through His Word. Fix our minds on them. Put our faith in them. And tell God, say, Lord, I believe You. Help my unbelief. Increase my faith in this promise. In trusting You, Lord. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to do. And then act. Paul says that we walk by faith and we live by faith. But our problem is for most of us, that concept is real vague. We don't really understand it. We don't put it into practice. So how do we do it? We do it by reminding ourselves of very specific, concrete promises that God has made. Promises Jesus has bought with His blood. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, it says, For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. And through Christ, our amen, guess what amen means? It means yes. We're in agreement. Our amen ascends to the glory of God. Then we trust in those specific promises. But I know what you're thinking. You're sitting there and saying, Brother Joe, that's awfully general. What promises can I lean on? What promises can I go to when I'm struggling with the task that lies before me or the circumstances that I find myself in and the strength in me is gone? Peter says, Whoever serves, let him serve as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. We do this not only by praying for that supply from God, but by trusting in the promise of the supply in very specific situations. Paul says that God supplies the Spirit to you by hearing with faith. And hearing is that declaration within yourself of what God has promised you. I'm going to give to you, I want to suggest you, and if, if you've got the bulletin this morning, the little handout that's titled Reflections, there are eight verses of Scripture listed here. And they, these are just some suggestions of a beginning point for you. Uh, and, and the challenge is, I would challenge you to, to commit to memory, but if you're like me, <laughs> the thought of memorizing ten verses, I've got eight here, but I'm going to give you ten verses of Scripture that you could go to as part of that aptat, trusting in a specific promise of God to help you regain your strength and walk in His strength, not your own. But I, I would ask you to memorize, but I want to suggest to you that perhaps maybe if you use these eight, that's great. If you've got your own group of Scriptures, that's fine. Put them in writing. Put them in writing and, and fold them up and stick them in your wallet. Or keep them with you where they're handy, where they're available to you. Or if you've got a phone, you've got an app, you may have an app on your phone that has a to-do list. Make it a part of your to-do list. I've got my, my list of God's promises here on my reminders app in my phone. And I've got, uh, actually I have 11 verses of scripture here that are, are, are for me to go to when I'm trying to find, when I'm trying to make that connection of trusting in the promise that would help me deal with the strength that I need for the moment or the task that I'm in. Look at the passages, Isaiah 
Isaiah 41.10 says, Don't be afraid, for I'm with you. Don't be discouraged, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. That's a promise from God. What is the promise that's being made in that passage? God's presence. No matter what you face, no matter what decision you need to make, whatever task lies before you, what circumstance you're in, God is telling you through this promise, I'm with you. I'm with you. I don't know about you, but that, that just kind of that kind of makes me stand up a little straighter. Makes me walk a little taller. And realizing no matter what I'm facing, I'm not alone. I'm not by myself. Philippians 4.19 And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from His glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Now think about it. Maybe there's something in your life where... <laughs> You're wondering how you're going to get through the end of the month. How are you going to make it to the end? How are you going to deal with what life has dealt to you right now? Script, this promise is that God will supply all your needs. According to His riches in heaven, God will supply all that you need. Now, based on that promise, if you've gone to God and you've admitted to Him and said, I cannot do this, I cannot deal with this, I need you. Father, I need your help. And based on this passage of Scripture, Lord God, it says that you will supply all my needs. So I'm trusting you. I'm declaring to you that I'm trusting you for the needs that I have before me today, tomorrow, and the next day. Now, act based on your declaration to God. Based on His promise. Can I tell you, I think what happens is God gives us a wisdom in that particular moment to act in the manner that He would have us to act if we're open to it. If we're not looking for our own solutions, but we're looking to God for those solutions. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. What a promise. <laughs> what a promise. God ever tell you to give it away before you receive? It's scriptural. It is. Here, let me let you in on a little secret. It's not yours anyway. It's not. It's His. Whatever you have. You know, it's, it's, it's strange. You know, there is, it's a biblical principle. You have to give it away in order to receive. But he gives you enough to share. Hebrews 5, 13, 5 and 6, For God has said, I will never fail you, I will never abandon you, so you can say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. So I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Ha! Think about it. Some of you this week are going to face some circumstances, whether it be in home, family, or job, where you're going to be confronted and you're going to need this reminder. What can mere people do to me? The Lord is my helper. It's in His strength that I stand. It's in His shoes that I walk. Psalm 84, 11, For the Lord God is our sun and our shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those, here's the key, from those who do what is right. Mm. Romans 8, 38 and 39 says, And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Woo, I love this. I love this promise. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
I don't know about you, but there are those moments where you just simply need that reminder that God loves you. There's strength there. Psalm 23, 6, Surely goodness, surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. The promise of your future home, the promise of God being there as mercy, as a merciful God and a good God. James 4, 7 says, So humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. You're going to face temptations this week. You're going to face the devil himself. He's going to come before you and he's going to put something in front of you where you're going to have to make a choice whether you're going to follow what he's pointing out for you to do or you're going to follow what the Lord says to do. It says resist the devil and he'll flee. When it happens this week, you turn and run. Run to God the Father. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says each time he said, this is... To Paul, he says, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. God can use your weakness to build strength in you. Psalm 50, 15, Then call on me when you are in trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will give me glory. God has a plan. God has a purpose. God has a design for you. God has a promise for whatever you are facing, whatever you will be facing this week. Acknowledge that you're nothing apart from Him. Pray and ask God for help. Trust in a specific promise from God. And then act based on that promise and then what God reveals to you and shows you. Then move forward. And then thank God. Thank God even before it happens for what He's doing because that in and of itself is an act of faith. God wants so much for you. God wants to give so much of Himself to you. Where are you today? What are you facing today? Maybe there's something going on in your life in this moment that you realize you can't deal with it on your own. And you need to trust in a specific promise that God has for you. Father, in this time, in this moment, this invitation, Lord God, I pray that you've made yourself plain You've revealed Yourself to Your people, Father. And to those whom You were speaking today, Lord God, I pray that You would give them the strength and the courage to respond to what You're saying. Lord, if there's somebody here today that finds themselves, Lord, at the end of themselves, Lord, then You've got them right where You want them. And Lord, You're waiting with open arms to receive them. I pray, Lord, that they would run to You. Run to you, Father, and discover a loving, merciful, good Father who has a plan and a purpose for their life. Speak, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand as we sing 504? Do you? 